apes together strong. What's going on guys, I'm Chris and welcome back to another video. So today I've got my ranking of the new Planet of the Apes films. These range from Rise of the Planet of the Apes in 2011 all the way to the recently released Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes. Before I dive into this ranking though, be sure to hit that like button and comment down below your ranking of the four new Apes films in the Caesar-verse. I just made that up, but that might actually be a thing. Subscribe and hit that notification bell to help reach my goal of 150,000 subscribers here on the channel. It means a lot. And if you guys want to watch movies and TV shows with me, you can do so on my Patreon. I have commentary tracks for all of Stranger Things. I'm working my way through Fallout right now. I recently watched National Treasure and the original Star Wars. I have lots of fun with it over there. For $5 a month, your support can make a big difference in my content creation journey, so consider joining the Filmstock Patreon today. But without further ado, let's just dive into this ranking. So coming in last place for me is going to be Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes. The movie comes out this weekend, and honestly, I did not dig this movie all that much. I walked out really underwhelmed. Now, I will praise the the visual effects. I mean, the motion capture technology has come so far. It was great when this series started up in 2011, and now it's perfection. Honestly, it's the most hyper-realistic apes I've ever seen. Like, some of the visual effects shots here are Avatar The Way of Water level great. There's scenes where apes are submerged in water, and the hair on their body just looks so real. I honestly am impressed with almost every visual effects aspect of this film, but when it comes to the story itself, I found it to be really bland, and the main reason is because the characters themselves aren't very compelling or interesting. The standouts are Proximus Caesar and Raka, two characters who do not have nearly enough screen time in this film. Instead, all the focus is on the new protagonist of Noah, who I found to be shockingly uninteresting as a character. I also found the movie to be really poorly paced. It's two hours and 25 minutes. I went on a whole spiel in my review about how blockbuster films just are unnecessarily long for some reason now. You can check out my review of this movie linked up above. But when it boils down to it, it felt like it was three hours long, and that really just bogged down this movie in my mind. Yes, there's visual spectacle here, but the scale of this world felt small when compared to the trilogy, and when I look at this movie overall, I go, okay, I really like certain concepts that they introduce, specifically this idea of apes viewing this false leader as a godlike character who's just like Caesar, but in reality, he's got everything twisted. I really appreciated the ideas there, but I felt like there was a lot of surface level exploration of these ideas, which didn't really provide much depth and was unfortunate because I wanted to love this movie. It seems again that I'm in the minority here, so if you guys have seen this movie, let me know what you think down below and check out my full review. But Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes is comfortably the weakest in the new ape series so far. Moving on to my number three, I've got Rise of the Planet of the Apes, a big step up from Kingdom. I think Rise is a very, very good introduction film for this series. It sets up Caesar as the main protagonist so well, showing his family life, but also his birth family taken away from him. And we also see this character grow up in front of our eyes and have these realizations where he's like, huh, maybe I'm not a human. Everyone views me as this outsider. And he ultimately assumes the role that he was always born to have as a leader for these apes. And I will say the rapid advancement of the apes in this film is scary. It's all because of humans. James Franco's character, Will, is trying to help out his father who has Alzheimer's but he inadvertently creates this virus that allows for the advancement of apes, but humans themselves regress and ultimately die. It's horrifying to think about how something like this could happen in the real world one day. We saw the pandemic not too long ago, and for the longest time when I watched this movie, I was like, oh, it's so far-fetched. Any movie about a virus or an outbreak, never gonna happen. We saw the pandemic in 2020 and the effects it had. It's really not that far-fetched to think something scary like this could happen in our society one day. And while I do enjoy this first entry quite a bit, it's essentially a prologue to the Matt Reeves films in my mind, which is fine. It does a very good job of setting up this world and establishing character dynamics, but it does lack some of that style and specifically the action sequences of the Matt Reeves films, but that's not what this movie is intended to be. And it does not remotely take away from the top-notch character work and world building that we see in Rise. Also, this movie features perhaps the most clever use of the credits themselves at the end of the film 
to progress the story as we head into dawn. It's haunting stuff. My runner-up is going to be War for the Planet of the Apes. I rewatched the Apes trilogy leading up to Kingdom for the first time since 2017, so I actually hadn't seen War for the Planet of the Apes since July of 2017 when I saw it in theaters, and what a treat it was to go back and rewatch this film. I'm a sucker for conclusions done right, and War for the Planet of the Apes delivers on closing out this story. This is the final film of the Apes trilogy, the third of this new series, and it's beyond impressive to me how realistic these apes look in this movie. I have no clue how War for the Planet of the Apes did not win the Oscar for Best Visual Effects. What's most remarkable to me about War for the Planet of the Apes is how beautifully it closes out Caesar's arc. In Rise of the Planet of the Apes, he's this hidden offspring of a science experiment, essentially, right? And we see the progression of Caesar from this hidden baby ape to this full-on savior of all apes. It truly is the stuff of legends. War for the Planet of the Apes opens with a riveting sequence between apes and humans, just so well directed by Matt Reeves. And then you've got Woody Harrelson's character, the Colonel, who is truly despicable in this film. But I really love how War for the Planet of the Apes drags Caesar through the pits of hell, essentially and ultimately he has to rise back up and be the leader he was born to be. That's one of my favorite tropes in media. Caesar loses his wife, one of his sons in this film, but he has to push through and do what's right for the apes. Even if he's not feeling it, he shows up and he is a true leader. This film explores those ideas of leadership, what makes a good leader and a bad leader. Those ideas are almost parallel between the Colonel and Caesar, and it's just masterfully crafted. It closes out this Apes trilogy so well, and War for the Planet of the Apes cements the Apes trilogy as one of the finest of this century. But taking the top spot for me is gonna be Dawn of the Planet of the Apes. This is the middle film in the trilogy, the first directed by Matt Reeves. And what a brilliant sequel this is. Like, it's truly a visual spectacle. Every single frame in this movie could be hung in a museum. They're just such works of art. As a follow-up to Rise, this movie is dark as hell, as it really portrays how the worst of humanity can spread like a virus to impact everything and everyone apes included, specifically Koba. He's a standout villain in this series and one of the best written characters in the series. He really represents the worst of apes, but it's because he has this resentment for humans and he can't let go of hate. And Caesar as a character has seen the light side of humans, the good in their hearts with characters like James Franco's Will in the first film. So their ideologies are clashing throughout this film. Their views on humanity are clashing and it makes for some damn great conflict. This is the most action-packed film of the bunch for sure. And the way Matt Reeves directs some of these sequences is really enthralling stuff, specifically when the apes raid the camp and they're riding on horseback with torches. There's a shot of Koba on a tank and the camera's stationary on this tank showing all the chaos chaos ensue behind them with these explosions. It's just really cool stuff. Of the trilogy, this movie has the strongest human characters. I think of Jason Clark's character in particular. And at the end of the day, Matt Reeves really feasted with this one. Dawn of the Planet of the Apes is epic at times, but at the end of the day, it really does explore this idea of how the worst parts of humanity can impact everyone and everything in the world, and how sometimes you have to answer for the choices that those around you make. Even if you disagree with them, you have to face the consequences. Dawn of the Planet of the Apes is a phenomenal sequel, and when I first saw this movie in theaters back in 2014, 10 years ago, I wasn't all that crazy about it but it's grown on me over the years, and this recent rewatch was eye-opening as it really showed me, yeah, this is the best Apes film I've ever seen. But that's just my ranking of the four new installments in the Caesarverse, as I'm gonna call it. Let me know your ranking in the comments down below, and be sure to hit that like button, subscribe, and hit that notification bell to help reach my goal of 150,000 subscribers here on the channel. It mean a lot. And of course, check out my Patreon link down below if you guys wanna watch movies and TV shows with me. I've got about 15 spots left in a giveaway I'm running. More details down below. But that'll do it. Thank you guys as always for watching and until next time i'll see you guys later